the right thing, but I got to think about all the people I love. Hello everyone, this is Matt from CVG and I'm here with James Jarvis who recently went to Paris to see Watch Dogs. Hello. Now, we're going to sit through this video and pick out some of the the, the biggest points in it and um, it's all looking pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking really good. Uh, the demo we saw was on, they said next gen hardware, uh, which I'm assuming to be PS4 and this footage you're seeing is the same footage that we saw. A uh, very early thing to point out is it has got Xbox buttons in it, but that is because it was running on a PC with an Xbox pad plugged into it. So it's not like 360 footage that we're seeing here. This is brilliantly next confusing. Year. Yes, very confusing. But and what do we think? I mean, it's really impressive. Uh, it looks really good. I think the thing to remember is that as it goes through this footage, all the stuff that's happening is happening. Like it's so dynamic. There's mm. loads of people in the world. They're all going about their daily lives. There's loads of cars and traffic and mm. stuff. And you can the draw distance is pretty big. You can see quite a long way. It's a good point, actually. You know, this isn't an FPS. It's a, a sort of a living, breathing, breathing world. Yeah, everything's happening around you. Like, and there's no sort of lag or frame dropping anything. It's just it's nice. It's really good, smooth experience. You can see that le leaf moving. Yeah, that, that kind of leaf physics. That kind of stuff is your your next gen yeah. level of. Of the environments, you've got that. You've got the wind. You've got real rain, which we'll come on to and see a bit later on. And from what you saw from stuff like that, was it actually feeling like a living, breathing world, or did it feel like a simulation? It definitely feels like people are there and like things are happening around you, and it's not. And you're just sort of existing in that world yeah. rather than sort of the world changing to like as you pop into it, like things start happening. It, it does feel like everything's happening That's cool. all the time. I and mean, we didn't get to play it. I should say that we were watching another man player right. um, but from what we saw it was it looked really good if we just get onto this bit here you can hear the music playing in the background and there's a really cool thing they have in this game where you use your phone like it's like a smartphone you get like you do in, in everyday life and it has apps on it and everything like that you can't make any phone calls right who uses Usually. their phone for that anyway well exactly um, which is uh, quite weird because in the game there's loads of signs and posters with phone numbers on right. scattered around <laughs> And I was like, oh, can you use your phone to make phone calls? No. Like, no. <laughs> you can't. But you can use your phone to, like, uh, when you're listening to music and stuff, you can scan it using one of the apps, which is called SongSeek, which is a bit like Spotify and yeah. SoundCloud and all of that kind of thing. But you can then tag that music and download it to your phone so you can play it a bit later on when you're walking around. Right. Or you can use that song to throw it to other devices at other shops, That's say it. if they're playing jazz. You can go, don't like playing jazz, I'll put on that song I heard earlier. Amazing, so the, the world is your jukebox. Yeah, essentially. Nice. Uh, we're just going into a shop here and uh, Aidan's going to buy some stuff. This is uh, something we haven't seen anything of before. Um, and I'm probably unusually excited about the fact that you can buy stuff, but it's all presented quite nicely, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, you what get... Are you buying there, a watch? Uh, I think he's selling a watch oh. which you'd get from taking off victims or okay. muggings and things like that you can just go in and sell your things for cash to buy things that you need like hardware and ammo so you're like Robin Hood really you're sort of taking from the bad to, to, to buy guns <laughs> to buy all the just guns just like Robin Hood did yeah there's loads of guns in the game I think they said like over 30 and you get your normal sort of shotguns machine guns sniper rifles mm. That is that a big of part of it from what you saw? Because we saw like a, a bit of combat, but the the thing that intrigued me was the the sort of the the underbelly of it all. You know, the kind of sneaking and then knocking people out with costumes and stuff. But do you think it's going to ramp up in a big way? You're going to get big sort of combat set pieces. I think it has to eventually. Like you'll have to go and, and take down some big operation. I'd mm. imagine with all your guns and stuff. But I think the hacking side of it will play quite a big part, as well as the guns. I, I'd imagine you could do all the missions quite stealthily yeah. if you wanted to without a lot of shooting, but the options there, and mm. you know, if you're given a machine gun and everything in a big open world where cars are driving about, you're going to let rip. <laughs> the thing that you're probably going to end up doing is shooting all the cars. With that in mind, because obviously it's a little bit of an unusual concept with so many different elements to it, is there anything that it particularly reminded you of, or is there anything you think it, it resembles? Well, this bit here we can see. Uh, Aiden going into one of the CTOS headquarters, which acts a little bit like the outposts in Far Cry. Right. Do we so know what that stands for? It's called the Central Operating System. So the T is... <laughs> it's just not part of it. <laughs> not part of the thing at all. <laughs> it just sounds cool. Yeah, CTOS is better than C... 
OS. Okay. Yes. Because uh, central abbreviated is definitely not CT. No, but uh, yeah, that controls almost every part of the city's technology and holds key information on all the city's residents. Mm. So this is one of the headquarters that controls all that information, and you have to go in and hack this central thing to give you access to that district's information. So you can right. only get information on people in that district once okay. you've hacked one of these like installations. Now this absolutely fascinates me because I guess I'm just a, a voyeuristic nutter. But the, the from what we saw in the trailers of the the bits of information it was throwing up, up about potentially everyone, what impressions did you get of that from what you saw? I think it will be really good. There's loads of different things that come up on the people. I don't think from what I saw that those things are going to be persistent in the world. Okay. So you'll get when you're playing it you'll get to see all the things pop up but when you play it again they might not necessarily be the same people or okay the so same. the same man like might not be a, a pro-lifer every single time that you you steal money from him i don't think so okay uh you, and you also i had an interview with the creative director and you can't sort of follow someone around in their daily lives and just spend the whole game wandering around people like there'll come a point when <laughs> the people will just sort of go in a shop and knock okay. them out or, or something, you know, like there has to be a cut off point. Yeah, they that said seems that, fair enough, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, they said they could do it. Like mm. PS4 does allow them to do that, but that would be all it could do. Yeah, like, it's not it really what to, this is, yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to make a, an open world life simulator, then I guess that's life. Safe, uh, life or stalking. Yeah. Oh, either's fine. Uh, so yeah, here we can see uh, Adam take control of one of the security cameras to, this is their version of tagging, so you can see where all the enemies are. That looks mega smooth. Which, yeah, it's a really clever way of doing it, and this because, you know, uh, Chicago, which where this is based, is such a technologically advanced city, like in real life mm. and in this, that it is full of surveillance cameras, and that this is the kind of thing that they use to, to get around the whole, oh, how are you going to see inside this building without, you know, going in and looking, like using the security cameras mm. and hacking that's great. It's nice to have an excuse to, to see around corners. You know, most games don't even bother with that. I just noticed on that last bit there as well, um, talking about it looking next gen, the the shadows and especially the trees and the foliage and stuff looks absolutely incredible. Considering this is an urban environment, it looks really, really lush. Yeah, everything uh, really reacts to the weather as well. Like if it's windy, the trees will shake in the wind and, oh. and the rain will move in different directions depending on which way the wind's blowing and that stuff is like that. literally what i want from next gen i want wind in trees <laughs> they were saying that that's basically what ps4 and, and the next gen technology allows to give them in watchdogs like the ps3 and xbox 360 versions will be at its core the same game yeah and everything will work and it will have the same feature sets almost and things but the ps4 mm. next gen version gives them the opportunity to add layers of physics and things that just they just can't do at the moment yeah. so you'll get we saw a, a tech demo of, of the wind mm. blowing across different streets and on current gen it's just like certain directions it goes yeah. like eight different directions and on next gen it can dynamically sweep around cars and around buildings and things and you can see it circling around stuff amazing you heard it here first next gen is dynamic swirling wind <laughs> that and water the yeah. water looks very impressive yeah. as well and obviously the water will react to the wind as well so you get really choppy water boat sections and stuff if it's stormy and i sound like i'm being flippant about that that is amazing like, it really it is, is and it really did look very impressive there's, there's loads of things that happen in the streets like just things fluttering around and dust mm. going across the pavement and things like that and it just it really adds to you being immersed in the city yeah so we can see him still going into this complex here and all of these animations are contextual so you right. don't have to press any buttons he will move and duck and go into cover when you expect him to yeah so th I think that's a nice new next gen thing as well it like looks all the it's very seamless, isn't it? That that kind of transition from like corner cover to the camera to going back to it—it it, it sort of snaps instantly. Yeah, and it doesn't look like it's like. I mean, there. I don't know how, in gameplay terms, that will feel like to play, mm. but it certainly looked like it was a very smooth and easy process to. Really does, through. yeah. I love the the sort of the the wireframes that it's projecting over the world as well. That doesn't seem at all. Um, intrusive to me. It feels like it really fits. Yeah, it's, I think it's just subtle enough yeah. to give you a hint that you can do stuff. I mean, I, I would assume that you, you, know, you don't have to use any of that if you don't mm. want to. And there we can just see him using what they're calling focus. Bullet time. Which is, <laughs> yeah, their version of bullet time, which you get for, you sh you've got like a bar 
um, I don't know how long that bar will last, right. but you do get a, a bar of, of focus that you can use for shooting or driving mm. or doing anything like that. Presumably refill it by taking people out silently or something Possibly, like that. Possibly, or it just comes up over time, right. I would have thought. But um, they wanted you, they wanted to put it in there, so not so it was a thing that you'd use in combat, but for something that gave you the sense of that you were this thing, this person that could hack into stuff and sort of predict what was going to happen. Yeah. So it's more of a, a feature to use when you're giving chase to someone, in like, like we've seen in the previous videos when mm. you're chasing that guy down the alleyway and he blows up that fuse box. Yeah. It's more to use it in situations like that rather than to like slow down a massive gunfight. Okay, so you can sort of weigh up all your options. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. To see what's in the environment around you and use that to the greatest effect. Yeah. Rather than just going, I'm going to shoot 10 guys in the head. With that in mind, did you get the impression that you're going to have loads of different ways of doing every single mission in the same way you did with Deus Ex? Because like, the stuff that we just saw there where he's popping up like a thing to get behind cover, and that feels a little bit like this is the way you should be going. Is Do you think there's going to be numerous ways through? Are you going to be able to go in all guns blazing, or are you going to be encouraged to take the, the sort of the cleverest path? I think what they'd want would be everyone to play it in the way that they wanted to play it. Mm. Like the, I think the world will hold up to you playing it however you want mm. there's probably I mean as with all these things like and as we saw in Far Cry there's, there's really I mean there's two ways in there's, there's stealth yeah. or there's going in and, and shooting everyone and, and there's you know a halfway point in between that where mm. you get in stealthily and then something goes and a bit wrong seizure. and yeah. you have to end up shooting everyone um, but all those things have consequences which we'll, we'll see we saw in the demo that they showed us if you get a gun out in the street mm. people will react to it like this uh, Aiden is is trained in like you'll see him when he uses his phone like that. He always uses it down by his side, right? And that's you know to make it subtle. And you yeah. get people who walk around with it in real life with like in front of their face, yeah. and you can just look over their shoulder and read kind of stuff. But he's learned how to do all that stuff. Like if he gets his gun out, he'll contextually hide it behind his back right. and walk along. That's definitely something I've noticed. That the animation, everything about the way he moves and the way he holds stuff, he looks deliberately a little bit shifty and it, mm. it, it looks really really perfect I think mean, absolutely spot on yeah and the, and the animations are, are brilliant but yeah. uh, if he does get his gun out and point it at someone there we heard him do that and then someone next to him like, started calling the police right. and because he's like tapped into the networks and yeah. everything you can hear that phone call taking place and then it shows you on the map where that phone call is taking place from and he ran over to him and just like pointed the gun at him and said put the phone down and he was like <laughs> okay and, and then the call was like cancelled and they didn't no, the police didn't come but nice. if you don't do that then obviously the police turn up and you've got like a heat level and you have to get away from yeah. the cops and, and and that that kind of stuff's really nice being able to like stop people in the world yeah. you know, pointing you out and stuff like we can see here if you do take control of a, <laughs> a security camera and these guys, these guys don't like it they can just stop you good you know. shot well, yeah that is pretty good from a tiny rock as well but yeah, so you have to be quite careful about yeah. you know, where you're activating things and what you're doing okay. and stuff. We can see here, in, as we've all got at home, turning on someone's Wi-Fi hotspot. Is that is house. that why my internet goes off? Because Aiden Pierce has turned off my router? Possibly, yeah. Well, he's he's just gained access to it now, and we'll see. This is how they you sort of looking interiors of buildings without going into them. Right. So you can turn on a load of Wi-Fi hotspots and then use a device in that house to have a look inside like this guy he can go in and because the guy's got like a computer and cameras mm. and you know everyone's got loads of devices in the house that got cameras on uh, that you can go in and, and sort of have a look around and see what's okay. happening and he's there with a mannequin yeah he's there with a mannequin he collects action figures okay uh, and yeah he's sort of having a chat with this woman that he's found from a shop you've got to practice somewhere that's the uh, yeah, I don't know if he's practicing. We've all done it, right? Chatting up or, or anything like that. But okay. but yeah, nice touches like this. So you can see that you know it's been reported stolen. Yeah. He's obviously nicked it from a shop. That's great. And now he's having like a weird relationship with it, just in his uh, in his house. I can't wait to see how far this goes, and if it's going to be a case of, you know, you're just going to be able to look in someone's house, and potentially they're gonna there's going to be nothing interesting about it, which yeah. would also be brilliant. I mean, but that is a, a fantastic touch. I think there'll be lots of little things like this. I mean, obviously Chicago's huge, and it's got loads of networks and things. Mm. And you could you could go in and look in loads of houses, and I think there'll be a lot of things hidden around the world where you can go in and find little cool yeah. 
examples of people being a bit weird. And then, yeah, like you say, are just mundane things of yeah. people just doing normal stuff. I'd be interested if anyone watching this is from Chicago or has ever been there, if they're getting a sense of it actually looking like the place. Because obviously it's a futuristic version. It's not a place I'm familiar with, but it, I mean, it, it looks like such a living, breathing city that it'd be great if it does actually look like it as well. Yeah, I think it's quite representative. They've got some big key landmarks in there, I think. Uh, from what I could see, the whole of the like subway system is also yeah. in there. And you can also go on the trains and all. So it's like it's a huge city, and mm. to have it all as detailed as as we can see, is is quite an achievement, really. Yeah. I think uh, this is an example here of the more sort of moral aspects of the game mm. that you're going to have a choice whether to intervene in in side missions or not. Okay. Uh, I should point out that all of the things we're saying here, all of the things we saw in the demo, which is like. A, an extended version of this whole sequence mm. is these aren't missions these are just dynamic events okay these things will just happen and if you're there then you're there and if mm. you're not then then fine so they're going to potentially be happening while you're not there i mean with that in mind again do you think that i can't see there's going to be any kind of like red blue bar of kind of good and bad with morality but is it just a case that you can intervene if you want to and there are no major consequences for you as a character or have you not got a sense of that yet not that we saw but I'd imagine, I mean, I mean, he's billed as a vigilante. Yeah. He becomes a vigilante. He, he starts off being really concerned and paranoid about what's going on in his house and he needs to monitor his family and everything about what's happening and, mm. and he needs to t keep track of them all the time and then that expands to him wanting to monitor the whole neighbourhood yeah. and then he wants to monitor the whole city and you know, he becomes very paranoid about mm. surveillance and stuff. But... It's a little bit Batman in a weird way, that kind of sort of the, the vigilante element to it. A little bit. It really excites me. Yeah, and they were keen to say as well that he's not, it's he's not like the Batman vigilante. Like he's not. There's no sense of him working with the cops at all. No. Because because it's sort of grounded in reality. Mm. Obviously, in real life, if you're a vigilante, they don't. Around, they don't like it. So. No, they hate it. Yeah. And, they, and they will if you start pointing guns at people, even yeah. if they're criminals, the cops will come and you know mm. <laughs> try and track you down. And that's something that. I think this game does really well. Yeah. Like it's just it feels like it is just you on your own. Hmm. It's sort of framed against the whole backdrop of um, corruption, isn't it? And I, I, I assume that as you get further into it, that sort of corruption and and, and money and things like that are going to kind of f seep into the criminal justice system and things like that. And that also is quite exciting. The fact that it's, it's giving you quite a mature story, really, from from the little bits that we've seen. Did you get any impression of that, or, or were they quite tight lipped about the story? From what you saw, they yeah they didn't really want to go into the story too much. Just uh, just the background about about the character and, and where he's come from. Mm. Uh, we did see a screenshot of him with a woman. Yeah, tell us about the woman. Uh, she's a woman, and woman. she will be helping him. Okay. Uh, there was hardly any details about her. We saw a picture with her and another guy, as well as Aiden, in like a three-way shot. Yeah. Uh, so obviously he's going to have some help along the way as the game progresses. But aside from that. Mm. I don't really know how they're going to feature in, in the whole okay. the whole storyline yet. But. I could be on my own here, but like I, I really like the way Aiden looks, just because he looks like a normal man, and I really like the way she looks as well. They haven't gone, and obviously she's a bit sort of grungy and tattooed and stuff, and that's cool. But they haven't sort of gone out of the way too far to make her look like a, a video game character. It, it feels like when you look at the sort of the characters and things like infamous they just don't look like real people yeah. whereas this whole world feels quite sort of on message I, I think is that something that you felt while you were watching it yeah I think I think I think they've tried to make it as true to real life obviously with video game elements yeah. as possible everyone felt like that they were real people and everyone because of all the things that you can do with with tagging people and and seeing like little snippets of their life it really does add to to the whole environment and you can see that you know you imagine all that like what these people have been doing in the rest of the day like yeah. you know, so, oh like there's loads of things I wrote down loads of notes somewhere about all the different things that were like popping up on the screen he literally did pages you can hear the pages <laughs> being turned now so we've got things like uh, we saw a thing and it was frequent online purchase porn was <laughs> one of the things uh, refuses nightmare to... vision of the future <laughs> people can know yeah refuses to recycle pigeon fancier Celebrity autograph collector, car wait, wait, enthusiast, p pigeon fancier. Yeah, What's that? is that a thing? Uh, yeah, when you keep pigeons. Oh right, okay. Not like mm, right, okay. Not in the mannequin way. No, right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, I, I'm sure if you're keeping pigeons, you do love them a bit, but in a 
in purely. a platonic way. Yeah. Like, you know, you're just f- good friends. But there are loads of those different those different things like motivational speaker and that and that mm. kind of stuff. And all of that gives you, a, a, in a weird way, like an instant. Yeah. Uh, sort of you make an assumption of that person based on that tiny bit of information. And they're obviously giving you stuff that really, that cleverly makes you sort of fill in the gaps yourself, which is yeah. which is pretty incredible to us. And, and something I'm sort of amazed that no one's been clever enough to think at. Of already, but it, it does sound like like it really sort of builds up the, the the world that already exists. Yeah, and if we carry on here, we can see Aiden going to purchase some of the weapons. And in the background here, the if you don't stop, <laughs> if you don't uh, like take your, take care and keep yourself hidden when yeah. when crimes are happening, eventually people do spot you and the police will catch up with you. Yeah, and we'll see here. I mean, this was a, a thing that. It turns out that they f- they figured out that you've been going around killing people, and you see the man reaching for the alarm button there right. very subtly. Nice. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's it. The, and then the police are called, and you that's have to. Here we can see the rain. Wow, that like is amazing. Really good. And the cars react to the rain as yeah, well. Yeah, you can see they look slick. Like that. I have to say, we're probably going to have missed it now, but the T-shirt that the guy in the gun shop was wearing was amazing. It was the <laughs> wolf howling at the moon T-shirt. Yeah, it was. It looks just absolutely rife with tiny little details that that make things special, and and I might get lambasted for saying it, but this world excites me as much, if not more, as, as the GTA Five world. Yeah, I mean, it, it does really look very impressive, and you can see here him using the the pillars and stuff to destroy the cars mm. and the cops. The uh, that looks incredible. That underpass bit, the way it's lit, the amount of stuff that's going on with the weather effects as well, look, looks genuinely gobsmacking, and I. I take back what I said at the start about it look, not looking like a huge leap. That looked like a massive leap. Yeah, I mean, it does. It does look once it's running. It does look mm. amazing. Uh, they've had help from Ubisoft Reflections, who did the Driver series, right? With all the the cars and the driving and stuff. So they've got like sixty five cars, which have all got different physics and handling and things like that. And and Driver, the last one when you could jump in and out of the cars and stuff. The cars in that I thought were really good. And mm, you know, yeah, really yeah. It's, it, yeah, I mean that that does feel it spiritually like there's a huge chunk of that in this that kind of jumping up into the sky and going back down and stuff. And I thought that was a, that was a really good fun game, and this seems like a step on from it. And in terms of the engine that they're using as well, it's a it's a whole new brand new engine for Watch Dogs. They're calling mm. it dis- the Disrupt engine. They've been working on the game for for four four years, but this mm. uses like a load of new processing stuff, and obviously it's helped that it, the PS4 is built on almost PC hardware so yeah. it's quite scalable I think so, yeah. but it felt like a really good engine and they're putting it to really good use I think in this you, game have you got any sense of any of the what any of the stuff on the HUD means there so we've got like a, a countdown timer there with a, a magnifying glass which presumably is like how vehemently the police are, are looking for you and how long you've got left to get away perhaps yeah and that's it, your it red and yellow depending on the severity of, yeah it's the, the, there's a search radius on, on the cops and stuff mm. and obviously the more open environments you go in with more cameras the easier they're going to be able to spot you okay. so you have to sort of get away and like we can see here he's opened up he's gone inside a garage you shut the garage door behind you and the cops are like well oh, I don't know where he's gone yeah um, so, so you, you switch got, car and yeah or, or dump the car and then get up onto the roof and, and evade the police and it's going to be more like you, you can obviously get away mm. but I think it's going to be better because you'll have to get away in a way that you have to in real life, you, know, you have to hide and make yeah. sure you're out of eye line, and then go into a garage and and be aware that. of all the things that you use in the game, the security cameras and things like that. Exactly, yeah, and and that's a really a really cool new technique for escaping the police and like having to think about how you're going to get away and where you're going to dump the car and mm. how you're going to sort of avoid all the surveillance and stuff in the future. It it looks absolutely badass, and and having spoken to you about it and watched that preview, I'm more excited about it than ever. And I just want more, and I want it now. Yeah, it's really exciting. I think it's going to be a great game, so you should uh, keep an eye on it for things out in the future. It's coming out in November 21st, I think, this year, on current-gen systems. It'll be on next-gen whenever those, those systems get announced as well. So, so, yeah, lots to look forward to. Thanks, James. Can't wait.